Hi everybody, welcome to EcoDriver. My name is Helmut. This video is part two of a four part series about how to drive cars in the most efficient way. Part one was about full hybrids, part three and four will be about plug-in hybrids and conventional uh, ICE cars. And this part two will be about electric vehicles. So based on my experience over the last 20 years uh, as working in this field of eco-driving, I will show you how to maximize the range and reduce the consumption of electricity in your electric vehicle. Tip number one, acceleration. Yes, there is something missing. Hmm. I don't say gentle acceleration or fast acceleration or whatever, because it is a bit more complex. Um, and I know it's a great feeling to have 350 kilowatts and then just floor the pedal and and impress somebody next to you or somebody behind you I don't know uh, or just to get the feeling of how great it is to accelerate that quickly well I can only speak for me after I've done this twice I know what it feels like so uh, yeah but that's everybody's own decision but we're here to talk about efficiency so uh, well, let's talk about physics. I often hear in discussions when I say it is less efficient to accelerate quickly than to accelerate slowly, then surely somebody will tell me, yes, but the law of physics say that no matter how quickly you accelerate, uh, it always re uh, requires the same amount of energy. Well, yes, that's true, but the story doesn't end there. So, for example, Let's accelerate from 0 to 50, whatever, ki kilometers per hour, miles per hour. Uh, and it takes us, I don't know, 5 seconds and uh, it takes us a certain distance, let's say 50 meters or 70 meters, doesn't matter. Let's say 50 meters just for the sake of this uh, example. And then I accelerate only with only half the speed or half the intensity, so it takes me 10 seconds. Um, and therefore it takes me 100 meters. So when I accelerate quickly, I have reached the same speed in half the distance. And I, I think you already see what the problem is. Um, when you accelerate slowly, you have covered double the distance, but with the same amount of energy. So if you accelerate quickly, you still need to cover the same distance with the holding speed. And, and this is the additional energy you need when you accelerate quickly. It's not the, the acceleration process per se, it's the distance that you cover during those processes. So for this, it clearly makes sense to accelerate gently. But with EVs, it's not that straightforward because there is another thing called efficiency. So the electric engine, and I, I'm not a, uh, an electric engineer or whatever, so I just try to explain it in those simple words that even I can understand it. So basically, an electric motor is the more efficient, the closer it gets to its maximum power output. So for a car, that means accelerating as quickly as possible is from an, from an efficiency point of view, the, mo the best way to do it. However, most efficient doesn't mean that the overall consumption is lower. It means that this amount of energy you need is used more efficiently, but it's still more than the amount of energy you need when you accelerate slowly, even if this is less efficient. And we have to keep in mind, when you uh, accelerate quickly, you reach your speed in a shorter distance. So for this, for, for, for the pure process of, of uh, acceleration, you, you might be more efficient or you are more efficient, but then you have to cover the rest of the distance in holding speed. And this is very inefficient because it's, uh, you only use a very low percentage of the maximum power output of the, of the electric motor. Whereas if you accelerate slowly, you have a lower efficiency over the whole acceleration process but it's not that bad because uh, because you're still more efficient than uh, the fast accelerator for half of the distance where he has to uh, remain the speed at a very low intensity. I hope I made myself clear. Um, so in the end it's still more efficient. I, I cannot show you, I, I, I cannot do any, any maths and graphs and whatever to, to support this with numbers but 
based on my experience and um, based on on that what I've seen, I I still advise to accelerate moderately, not really slow, but just moderately, just sensible in in normal traffic. There's no need to start from a green light like a race driver because the next one will probably be red anyway, and you're restricted speed. So in the end, um, as I said, it's not that straightforward, but in general, accelerating gently saves you more energy than accelerating harshly. Tip number two, avoid harsh braking. This is mainly an advice for owners of vehicles with moderate power output. There are a lot of EVs out there with 100 kilowatt power output, like Renault Zoe or uh, uh, Fiat 500, 87 kilowatts. One of my last videos I've tested the Dacia Spring with 33 kilowatts. Uh, I mean, that's one extreme, but um, there are lots of cars out there with 100 to 150 kilowatt. So we have to keep in mind that roughly only 8% of that power output in motor mode, when the motor drives the car, uh, can be produced in regen mode. So when the, the car drives the engine, if the, if, the, if the electric engine is braking the car, and this, those 8% uh, they only can be achieved when everything is perfect, like the temperature of the battery. Um, I show you here a short clip of my trip with the Renault Zoe. I'm going down here on my EcoDriver loop and you have, uh, as with most electric cars, you have a D mode, so the normal drive mode where the car regens a little bit and you have a B mode, braking, so when you put in B, the car is braking a little bit more, therefore regening a little bit more. So I'm going down here, you see 13 kilowatts are produced by the electric motor. Now I'm putting in B and what happens? It tells me, it is in German, but it tells me the battery uh, B mode cannot be used because the battery is too cold. Hmm. So that means for the rest of this downhill, uh, section of my eco driver loop, I only had uh, roughly 13 kilowatts of braking power available, and the rest, when it came to a, hard, a tight turn uh, or when I had to stop, then the friction brakes were used. So I couldn't use the full potential of uh, the electric regeneration because the battery was just too cold. Later on in the trip or later in the day, uh, it was fine, I could go up, um, I saw the this gauge going up to 23, 24, 25 kilowatts, but uh, here, when I, when I need it, it didn't, it didn't go, f go further up. So all the circumstances must be perfect in order to make use of, of the regenerative power. The, the, the Zoe has a 100 kilowatt uh, motor, and here I show you a short clip with the Peugeot E 2008. It's the same section, I'm going down and you see here I have to brake and I'm almost reaching the maximum capacity of the charge uh, section of the power gauge, which means that I'm al already reached full regenerative capacity of the electric motor. And, and I'm going down here in a very efficient way, a very economic way. It might well be that most other users or most drivers exceed the, uh, the regenerative capacity and therefore use the friction brakes and cannot use the full capacity of, of the regeneration. And that, that means reducing uh, range and increase consumption. Tip number three, coast as much as possible. Maybe you have experienced the same. You go into a car dealership, uh, take a test drive on an electric vehicle and the salesman tells you, yes, and here is B mode and, and use it as much as possible and try to regen as much as possible and therefore that increases the range because you get all the energy back to the battery. Well, as I've already said in my previous video or just before, you never get back what you invest in the first place. Um, I have done a video with the Kia EV6 on this channel. I put the link in the description box below. And uh, in this test, I have tried to compare the two driving styles, regenerating as little as possible versus regenerating as much as possible energy. And I have done this test in, um, in city traffic. I've done four laps. Uh, the first two laps with 
a slit less possible regeneration, the second two with, so tr lab three and four, with as much regeneration as possible. Overall, I have done four of those tests for my German channel, and, and they will come to the EcoDriver channel over the next couple of weeks. And with all of those four tests, the result was the same. The consumption was between 7 and 21% higher when I tried to regenerate as much as possible over as little as possible. Uh, in one test that I've done with the BMW iX3, there is a gauge that tells me how much energy is regenerated. And with this car, in the first two laps, with as little rege regeneration as possible, I regenerated 0 0.8 kilowatt hours of energy. Whereas in the second uh, part of the test, where I tried to regenerate as much as possible, uh, the amount was 1.6, so double the amount of energy was regenerated in the second part, but the overall consumption in the second part, where I tried to regenerate as much as possible, was about 8.4, if I, if I remember correctly, 8.4% higher than when I tried to regenerate as little as possible. And with this information, I could do some calculations, and in, in, in the case of regenerating as little as possible, I had between 26 and 30 percent regenerate, whereas in the second part I had roughly around 45 percent regenerate, so 42 to 45 percent regenerate. Um, but overall consumption was still higher. So that tells us no matter how much you regenerate, you, your consumption will always be higher because in order to be able to regenerate, you need to invest the energy in the first place to get the vehicle up to speed. So it's always better to coast as much as possible, to keep the car in motion, to brake as little as possible. And that's, that's, that's uh, valid for, for all kinds of cars. Braking is a waste of energy. A little bit less with electric vehicles, but still you waste energy. And this is something we want to avoid if we want to increase the range and reduce the consumption with EVs. Tip number four, playing with the road. Yes, uh, it's the same tip number four as I had with the full hybrids and uh, I still get the impression this, that this is something controversial because people then often comment it doesn't make sense to get this advice because when you go down you get back the energy anyway by braking. Yeah, but it's, it's the same explanation as with tip number three. You never get back what you have invested in the first place. So playing with the road, what do I mean by that? Imagine a roller coaster. The cars are pulled up to the highest point there they are released and then they make the way to the end only by kinetic energy and gravity. And uh, the same principle applies when you drive on hilly terrain, on terrain where the, the gradient of the road changes constantly. If you go up, then reduce the speed slightly, uh, you, use much, you use less energy and when it flattens or it goes down, then re-accelerate and use gravity in order to help you accelerate and build up speed again. And build up enough momentum to go into the next uh, uphill section or when it goes up a little bit then just use the momentum to go up and I'll show you here an example of my trip with the Mercedes EQA it's on my eco travel loop um, I'm here with roughly 50 with around 58 kilometers per hour and we go into this hill and I'm on the way up I'm slightly reducing the speed and when it flattens then I re-accelerate this isn't restricted to hilly terrain only, also in city traffic. We have bridges, we have underpasses where you can use this uh, principle. I'll show you here a clip with the Renault Zoe. You see up this bridge, 58, and then I'm reducing the speed, and when it goes down, then I'm re-accelerating a little bit. The same with the underpass. I'm just reducing the speed a little bit here because there's a speed control box uh, going down here into the underpass build up some momentum and on the way up then reduce the speed a bit. You all can do that within the range of the either the limit or the other traffic. It's just about two or three kilometers per hour or one or two miles per hour and, and that's sufficient to reduce the use of energy. Tip number five, external factors. This is a bit of a mishmash of different stuff you've probably heard before. Uh, don't worry, I won't advise to drive without the heating when it's minus 10 outside. But the problem with EVs is that they are very efficient. 
The electric engine per se has a has efficiency rate of I don't know 90 plus percent in in most cases. That means that all the external factors have a much bigger influence on the consumption than we have with an ICE, where we have a, an efficiency rate between 10 and 40 percent. So whatever you do with an ICE, it has a much smaller effect on the overall consumption than with an EV. And therefore, just be a little bit more aware of the effect external factors have on the consumption just like everything temperature related so make sure that you if it's cold outside and you need to heat make sure that you put on the seat heating first um, or the, the, the steering wheel heating once the inside temperature is at the correct temperature then reduce the the power uh, then reduce the intensity of uh, of the heating or set the put temperature a little bit lower for example if you have a sunroof if it's cold outside but the sun is out then open the shade of the sunroof and let the let the sun in it helps you heating the, the the interior of the car if it's hot outside and the sun is shining uh, close the shades of the sunroof to keep the sun out um, loading i mean i have two child seats in my back in the back of my car and i try to remove them if i don't need them if the kids are not with me then i take them out because they are quite heavy and with an ev if you have additional 20 kilograms, 44 pounds, then that increases consumption much more than it would do in an ICE. If you have a roof box and you don't need it, just take it off. Uh, it's all those little, little things of advice that you always hear. You don't need to put this to an extreme. I mean, when it's, when it's minus 10 outside, then of course you put on the heat and you won't drive without it. But there are intelligent ways of using the heating system and all the different features you probably have in your car um, to reduce the energy. If you have a heat bump or if this car you intend to buy is available with a heat bump, get it. The, the consumption will still be higher when it's cold outside, but as long as not the full amount of energy needed for the heating is coming from the batteries, it's helpful. If you can preheat your car, do it. Tip number five is a bit of a generic, but it still helps and I still see lots of EV drivers just not doing it correctly and then complain about high consumption. But remember, uh, EV driving needs a bit of a rethink, therefore it makes sense to think about what you can do to reduce the consumption, if you want to. So those were my five tips of how to drive EVs really efficiently. If you want to see more of what I'm doing, of all the tests I'm doing with all different kinds of cars and you also want to see part three and four of this series then feel free to subscribe to this channel and if you hit the notification bell you won't miss any new video. That's been it for the EVs. Thanks for watching, take care and see you next time.